for more. We're joined now here, well, from our Bloomberg studios by Daniel Lakai, who is Chief Economist at Tresis. Daniel, good to speak to you this morning. Um, let me ask you a little bit about what's, what, what you're expecting from the Fed this morning. I am expecting uh, a cut, and I think that it's uh, quite likely that we see a 25 basis point uh, cut. Uh, and I think that the messages need to be on one side about the the economy being strong. Uh, I don't think that uh, these cuts in any case are warranted, given the actual macro data. However, uh, they're more a response to what the ECB, the BOJ, and the PBOC are doing. Uh, so I think that what is very likely is that we will see the Fed be on one side quite bullish, I would say even optimistic about the U.S. economy, with uh, talking a little bit about headwinds, etc., but uh, with a generally optimistic tone. However, continuing with, uh, with this sort of a slightly dovish tone that they have uh, implemented uh, for the past uh, three quarters. How do you feel about the European economy, Daniel, especially in light of um, the, 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 I guess, changing of the guard that we see going on at the European Central Bank? Hmm. I think that uh, the, the European economy is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. Many countries uh, bet it all on uh, mm -hmm. monetary policy, have abandoned all structural reforms, and what we see is an economy that goes rapidly into, into uh, stagnation, uh, driven by the numerous factors that go beyond what uh, governments are doing, like uh, demographics, uh, technology, and uh, other uh, structural factors. And what I think is that it's very unlikely that the Eurozone economy is going to improve significantly. Uh, furthermore, I don't think that uh, a stimulus package from Germany would uh, make any uh, discernible change on the, the European economy. So I think we still continue to be, we still continue to be quite, uh, I would say, prudent about uh, growth prospects. There are too many people out there uh, talking about a bounce into 2020 of the of the growth, uh, I don't think that that is quite likely, considering what we see in gross capital formation, in credit demand, and also in consumer spending. Take, taking that in mind, and then well, looking at valuations, Daniel, where do you think uh, your best back. opportunities are then as an investor right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, we continue to believe that uh, it's it's better to be in U.S. dollar-based assets, and I think that uh, uh, we, as we move into 2020, 2021, where uh, emerging markets face a massive wall of maturities in U.S. dollar-denominated debt, I think it's a very good opportunity to uh, see that uh, even with a dovish Fed, uh, the relative performance of the the U.S. dollar is likely to remain strong. As such, uh, we like uh, dollar-denominated assets. We like companies that are more exposed to the U.S. than to emerging economies or to Europe. And we think that uh, if you look at the uh, palette of investments out there, it is uh, still an environment in which the allegedly expensive but quality names will outperform those that appear more value driven or, or cheaper but remain cheap for a reason. Let me ask you, uh, given your political experience as well, what you make of the situation we have here in Germany for the first time in, uh, in, in the post-war federal republic. We have a state voting um, the, the extreme parties over the centrist parties, the, the left sort of former communists um, win the most in, in Turingen, followed up by the AFD uh, a radical right wing party, certainly viewed as such by a lot of people here. What does that mean to you? 
I think that what we are seeing all over Europe in many in many countries and Germany is not different is that the the the, the, the general voter is looking at uh, the economy is looking at the situation of the eurozone itself and some of the of the challenges of the eurozone including immigration for example and uh, and the lack of uh, technology leadership and uh, is is and this uh, discourse is, is polarizing the the voting base very very aggressively so what we're seeing is is this rise of populist extreme movements that seem to provide new or radical solutions to big and complex problems when what they're basically doing is not providing any new or radical solution just looking at the past and I think that that is the it shows that what the eurozone and what the European Union have done in order to sort of maintain at all cost a very intervened, a very directed model, a very uh, top-down model in which government spending is at the pillar of, uh, of the economic decision process, ends up generating a lot more discontent and um, unfortunately generates this rise in, in radical uh, and extreme movements that take advantage of things that uh, worry the population yet don't uh, don't solve anything all right daniel great to get some time with you today thanks so much for coming into the office daniel lakaya is the chief economist at trestis